people ask if they could see the different parts of the sword, so I'm going to take this apart and show you. Okay, so I've disassembled the sword. Let's go over the pieces very, very quickly here. This is called a kashida. Kashida, or ska kashida. It's the very pommel at the end of the handle here. This has a couple functions. Obviously, you can tie the ito to it. You can strike with it. It's very decorative. Protects the end of the sword, cleans up the end of it. Kashira, kashira. The wrap itself is called skaito, skaito or skamaki. And this is wrapped in different ways. This particular sword just has a standard kind of diamond grip wrap here. This one happens to be suede, but there are many materials, cotton, that it can be made of. This keeps the handle together, and of course it helps in your grip and the use of the sword itself. Underneath the wrap, you'll see this is called same or samehada. This is the shark skin or ray skin. It's dimpled underneath here. It goes down usually in strips on top of the handle, sometimes completely wrapped. And this helps with obviously keeping the sword dry. It keeps the wrap tight. You can see that in this case, they painted it black and you can lacquer these. Most of them tend to be white, but in this case it's black, but you'll see them in many different colors on different styles of swords. This Same is real, but sometimes they're fake and plastic when you buy your cheaper swords. Here you can see a Menuki. A Menuki is a decorative piece that sits underneath the wrap. This one happens to be chrysanthemums and perhaps a Shishi dog here. Many different styles of these. They're often underneath the wrap. Occasionally you'll see one wrapped on top. These will swell in the palm if they're on the palm side to help with your grip, but they're more or less for decoration. Perhaps some sort of spiritual meaning or family crest might be under there. You have the holes here where the two little mekugi pins go in. These are what hold the tang into the handle. You often have two of these in each sword. Some short swords will only have one. You have the fuchi. The fuchi is this little tiny little piece here that sits on the end of the handle, as you can see. And this really ties everything together. It makes the handle look beautiful. It separates and gives you a little space between you, your hand, and the guard so you don't get chafed on your hand. This one's decorated with some shishi dogs on here, and it looks like it's made of brass or copper. Sometimes you can change these out as long as the hole fits the suka handle. The hole handle itself is called the suka. Suka. T-S-U-K-A. The T is pretty silent. Then you have these, which are called sepa, S-E-P-P-A. The sepa are little spacers, little washers that sit here. And there's one on this side and one on the other side of the suba guard. These help keep things tight and they also protect the suba guard if it has a signature. The guard that came with this sword, as you can see, is a beautiful hand guard, but it does not have a signature. This one is from the Edo period. This is a very old suba guard. As you can see, it's beautifully handcrafted and made painted in gold, and I don't know if you can see this, but there is a mei, a signature here of kanji of the sword maker. So the seppa would protect that and kind of hide it like a little secret of who made this guard. Then you have the suba guard itself. There are many different shapes and sizes. You have them square, round, rectangular, all kinds of different edge shapes here. But the edge here, which is painted in gold, is called the mimi. That's the edge. You have the nakago ana. Ana means hole, A and A, so there are three holes in here, sometimes more. This is the nakago, the tang, ana here, where the tang goes through. And then you often have two holes, sometimes one, in the suba guard. And people often ask, what are those holes for? This side's called the, the kogai hitsu ana. And this one's called the Kozuka Hitsu Ana. The Kozuka is a small kokatana that sits in your saya. This is one here. And this is a little tool that they use for cutting. It could be a shuriken. It could be used for many different utilitarian things. And it sits in the saya, which I'll show you in a moment. But this allows, this Ana hole allows you to pull this little miniature knife out without having to draw your sword out of the scabbard. So that's what these holes are for. One is for a little knife here, and this side is for the kogai, which is like a hairpin. It's another little tool that's not sharp that you keep in this side of the saya for use for many hundreds of different things. This is called the habaki, and it's a little collar that slides on up to the blade. 
This kind of hides where the blade meets the Suba guard. It cleans everything up. This is an important piece because the tension on this are what holds the blade in the Saya scabbard. So the habaki is not just for looks, it's also for function to keep your sword locked in its case. If you decide to take your sword apart, this is called an akago here. This is the tang of the sword. You'll see many times it has two holes drilled in it. Sometimes it just has one. The length can be different depending on if the smith cuts it down or not. As you can see, this one has a May signature on it which means it's a higher quality blade. It was not mass manufactured. And this shows the date and the place and the name of the swordsmith. Of course, it's on this side on the katana, and it would be on the opposite side on Atachi. The signature is always on the omote side of the blade, depending on how you wear it in your belt. On the blade itself, you have the sharp part, which is called the ha, and then you have the mune, which is the backside, the underside, the spine of the sword, mune. You can see here that there is a hamon line where it is differential tempered. Hamon of these cloud patterns, and there's many different styles of that. I'll try to move the blade so you can see the detail. The length of the blade is called the nagasa. Sometimes you'll see in descriptions the sori, which is the curve of the blade. How straight is it? How curved is it? Some blades have a shinogi, a ridge line here. And some blades have what's called a he or a bohi. This one does not have one, which is basically a fuller along the sword to lighten the blade. Looking at the end of the blade, this is called the kisaki here, which is this piece. And you have the yokote, which is the line here. The little curve here at the end of the blade is called the boshi. And you'll often hear in swordsmanship from the kisaki down about a third of the blade, this is called the mono uchi. The mono uchi is the part that does most of the cutting and damage on the opponent. Remember that when you have a differential tempered blade with a hamon on it, that does not make it a better superior blade. In some cases, it can even make the blade more susceptible to cracking, bending, breaking. And in some cases, metallurgically, the modern steels can be stronger, less brittle, less likely to break, more bendable. The scabbard itself is called Saya, not Saya, it's S-A-Y-A, Saya. Saya is the scabbard of the sword. As you can see here, this is the mouth of the carp called Koiguchi. Koiguchi is where the sword goes in. This part is called the Kurigata, Kurigata, which is like a chestnut shape. This is what holds the sageo in, and you have the Shito Dome, which are the little pieces in here that often are not glued in. Those are decorative and they also keep the sageo wrap from breaking. This wrap is called sageo. The sageo is often very, very long. You can see it on almost all swords. It comes wrapped, but you can unwrap it. It can be made of cotton or silk. And this has many, many functions to it. You can tie your sword to your belt. You can hang your sword. You can tie up game with it. You could tie a tourniquet to stop a bleeding wound. Anything you can think of, this beautiful little handy cord is part of the saya. And the end of the saya is called kojiri. Kojiri, K-O-J-I-R-I. Kojiri is the end. Some saya have nothing on it. This one happens to have a hunk of metal here with a beautiful shishi dog. And again, you could strike the opponent with this. You could put it, it protects the saya from when you put it on the ground and the dirt. Keeps the wood from getting scratched up. But this is called the kojiri. Some higher in saya have this etched in here. Can you see that little slot? That holds the kozuka handle and the little mini blade here. This is what I was talking about before. This is inside the scabbard, and you'd pull the kozuka out through this little hidden secret kozuka hitsuana. These make really nice bow shuriken. All right, let's assemble this back. Let's put the habaki on first. Then we put on a seppa spacer. We put on the suba guard. We put on the next seppa. We slide on the ska handle here. Placing the makugi pins back in through the holes. And we give one last wipe to the habaki, the suba, and the blade itself. Of course, you can add some oil if you wish. And we replace the saya back over the blade. And there are a few of the basic parts of the katana. For your Kihon certification, consult your sword booklets and make sure you know the parts before your test. 
Thank you for watching, everybody. We'll see you next time. Domo arigato.